now that you've streamed some, what's yeah. what was that like for you? I love streaming on Twitch. It's actually so much fun. And one thing for me is I always look at one of the que- one of the many questions that I asked you and I've asked Fred and AZ was what do you look at when you're streaming? Mm. Cuz like you got Twitch up, you've got the act- or I have like OBS up and then typically I'll have like the instructions up for whatever I'm building. And so I find myself looking back and forth between um the instructions and OBS. So I have literally no idea how many people are on my my streams. So mm. it could be zero people. It could be 200 and I would, would not know. Um, the only real time that I, I get a gauge of how many people are on is when uh, someone raids and then I kind of look at that and I'm like, okay, it's probably somewhere around this number. Um, but it's been great. You know, when when I was on before... I had said that everything in social media has its place and it just makes sense that someone would live stream on Twitch because Twitch is is a live stream platform. Like that's its main thing. YouTube's main thing is long form video. Instagram and TikTok's main thing is short form video. And it was funny because I was on a stream with Jean and she said uh, kind of the same thing. She was like, yeah, it, it makes sense to stream on Twitch because that's mm-hmm. their their main focus. But it's been lots of fun, you know, looking back, especially on on things that I said the first time I was on, I was like, you know, people keep telling me everything's going to break and I have no <laughs> idea what that means. But I will find out at some point. Um, many things have broken to the point where <laughs> my laptop couldn't handle like streaming and just totally shut off and uh i forget who was on my live stream someone was on my live stream and oh it was bfab it was bfab was on my live stream and we were kind of talking back and forth and the live stream just cuts out and he messages me on instagram he's like did your live stream just cut out or like was that on my side of things i was like no 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 that was definitely me it's it's gone it is gone <laughs> and i thought about re- like starting it up again and i was like no i'm just gonna i'm gonna <laughs> no, relax you're like i'm good I don't, I don't need to do that yeah i'm good i'm all right that's that is so true that stuff happens all the time where mm-hmm. you may not touch anything like your setup is exactly the same as it was mm-hmm. the last time you're live but something just spontaneously breaks. Things just, yep. Something doesn't work. I think it was yep. uh, really interesting that you pointed out, like you have no idea how many people are in your stream. And yeah. there's this thing that comes up amongst streamers often about looking at your viewer count, and mm-hmm. a lot of us tend to not look at, at it on purpose. A lot yeah, of us end sure. up. Because because of and and we're going to get into this, the effects that it have has on us as a creator in real mm-hmm. time where we are like already trying to feel inter- like we're trying to be entertaining. We're trying to yeah. be on. Right. And mm-hmm. having a number hanging over your head of how exactly how many people are watching you in that moment I becomes know. an extra stressor. So I'd actually, I, I turn it off anywhere I can see it. So, yeah. And, uh, along with that, what's interesting, and I try not to say it when someone raids my stream is the number that they raid with. Yeah. Because for them, they might like, I don't know, feel insecure or whatever of how many people were watching them and that might discourage them from, Rating again in the future because they don't don't want that number, you know, shout out. Oh, rating with a group of two or whatever. You know, that's not sexy. It's not exciting, but it helps grow the community. Anything right. and everything helps. So um, that's something that I try and I always try and say thank you, of course, but try not to say the number. And uh, it's funny. Was it you that texted me or maybe it was Fred after some someone... Someone raided, and uh, <laughs> whoever it was was like, "Don't forget to like introduce yourself to the raiders." 
<laughs> and I, I kind of, I kind of started to understand that there's this etiquette to getting raided. You yeah. know, you you kind of bring some hype, you welcome the raiders in, yeah, and then and then you 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 ask the person, you ask the streamer, how hey, how was your stream? What were you doing? <laughs> Well, or you actually chit chat back and forth a little bit, right. and then you switch your camera, you switch the scene to just you. You do a little intro. Hey, if you don't know me, my name's Rob. I'm a, I'm a Lego builder here on Twitch. Da da yeah. da. Yeah, yeah. Um, and was it you? Or was I don't it remember. Else? It it could it have very well okay. been either of us, honestly, because I feel like yeah. that's something that either me or Fred would do. Uh, Fred, do you yeah, remember? Like, Fred's, in, yourself. Fred's in our chat. Oh, Fred's, he can, Fred's here. I was gonna say yeah. Fred could tell us. I don't remember. I I honestly could say that that is something either me or Fred would tell you to do. Yeah, for sure, for sure. It's, yeah, it's totally on brand. Yeah, see, Fred doesn't remember don't, either. We'll just don't, say don't collectively. Don't forget to introduce, introduce yourself. Who are you? Who are you? But uh, come, come, come. <laughs> <laughs> it's it, yeah. It's uh. It's great that you even said like there's this etiquette on Twitch. Yeah, because Twitch yeah. is its own subculture. If we're to be real, mm -hmm. there's a whole mm -hmm. thing here, and it's funny that you bring that up because and you I think you you dropped by during that stream i had like an etiquette stream like i had to like here's what you do oh, on that's right. here are things yeah. that you should think about being on twitch and yeah it's certainly there there are like kind of this certain things right like just common courtesies that you can have mm -hmm. as either a streamer or a viewer on twitch and so sure yeah and i think the whole introducing yourself after a raid is a big like thumbs up it's something that mm -hmm. not everyone especially new streamers know how to do and i think the faster you yeah. get to that point even if it's yeah if, if it's a quick hey i'm rob i build lego thanks for hanging out thanks for the the raid yeah. like even something yeah. as short as that is super awesome and it, you know it's just another way of yeah. letting everyone know that they're welcome and acknowledging that raid right the raid is a nice gesture in terms of the For fact sure. that someone came over and brought their their whole audience over to you so yeah yeah that's a huge deal to bring bring like your community and like introduce them to a a totally new person yeah that's awesome yeah it's incredible it's so like the etiquette thing it reminds me of like golf because you obviously play golf and there are certain rules that you need to know when you play golf but then there's this whole other set of unspoken <laughs> rules yeah and etiquette exactly that you need to know on the golf course and it sounds super stuck up which is and like this is going to sound super stuck up too but i don't love golfing with people that have never golfed before because they don't know the rules, but I don't like to be the one to have to tell them like, Hey, you can't do that. Or like you, you have to do this or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, but it's just simple things, you know, not talking when someone is about to hit the ball, not th th yeah, there's, there's so there's much so, stuff. There's little um, things. Yeah. And it's, and it's little things that you, you won't know until you go out and play golf. Same thing with Twitch. You won't know, until you go out and do a live stream. Absolutely. Like me, I didn't know that I had to introduce myself to the Raiders until I was on yeah. a stream and someone was like, hey, introduce yourself. To the, yeah, yeah, yeah. Introduce yourself to the new people. So, yeah. yeah. And, and and really, that that particular example is a bit of both etiquette as well as just best practice. Et the etiquette portion is just acknowledging the raid, right? Because I think... Even acknowledging the raid, a lot of new streamers may not necessarily know how to deal with that, or they'll see it and they yeah. won't know what to say or do. And then yeah. the introduction part, like formally, like, hey, I'm so-and-so portion, that's more of a best practice. Like, even even just saying, hey, raiders, welcome is good, but like the best practice yeah. form of that is a legit, like, Hey, I'm so and so. This is what Scored what I do there. here. Yeah, yeah. This is what yeah. I do here. And I mean, you've you've heard Zach M. Rutledge do his he's the, whole. He's, he's the king of it. Yeah, he has he has his follow. Say hello to your fellow Z Nation. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He has his follow, <laughs> his whole follow thing. He says, and then he has his whole. He me thing. in all the right places. It really does. Yeah. <laughs> and I and I would assume I would assume that most people that watch Zach. Could also say that word for word. 
you know, after having <laughs> heard you know, him it's say tricky so though. It's long because he put me on the spot oh, it's once. So long. He put me on the oh, spot. Yeah, we did a we did a a co stream not too long ago, okay. like a month ago, and he's nice. like, "Say it." I'm like, "Dude." I was like, um, something about touching you in the right places, yada, yada, <laughs> poke around a bit. <laughs> poke around a bit. Yeah, I, I, yeah and I, went, I was like, um, no, I got I, don't, I got nothing, man. I was like, I couldn't before recite the whole thing. That, before you said that, I felt much more confident that I could recite the entire thing. Now I'm like, yeah, no, I couldn't do that. Yeah, like words, like if you try to break down the whole thing. So I... <sighs> I hope he doesn't see this only because I'm going to say I, I'm going to take one of those moments and just record it or grab the clip of it. And I'm going to memorize that. Yeah. I'm going to memorize yeah. that so I can bust it out one of these days when I'm on his stream. Nice. I just, nice. but it, it, nice. it, it takes work, <laughs> but it, Zach is a wonderful example of what you would do and have, like, you don't have to have something pre-scripted or like, sure the exact thing that because Zach pretty much does the exact thing every time you don't have to have that yeah. I don't have anything like that and I've been streaming forever but I always make the point to you know welcome the Raiders say hello say what I'm doing I like to do the the context portion where like they show up and I'm mm. maybe in the middle of a conversation or I'm building something on, with Lego or something's happening I'll be like yeah you totally caught me doing xyz you know, and and that way that like kind of sets it up for anyone who's shown up in, with the raid. I'll be like, yeah, I'm building this crazy Hulkbuster thing. We build Lego all the time. How's your day and going? Kinda, and then yeah, I go yeah, back yeah. to it. Yeah. And um, but yeah, have you been caught off guard by anything? Like what kind of things streaming on Twitch have um, has surprised you? That's a good question. Anything that surprised me, like actually on the live stream or something that I didn't think about before. Something you haven't thought about. Mm. Cause I know you've done a lot of research. You've watched a lot of streams. You you've done yeah. a great job of like doing your homework. So I was wondering if there's anything that you're just like, Oh, you know, now that I'm in it, I didn't expect this or I, don't, I didn't know that this would happen. One thing that I will say to to anyone that is, you know, thinking about streaming on Twitch and is a you know Lego creator in a part of the the brick building community, right? Um, how the community just kind of like rallied around me and was like, "All right, this this Rob the Builder guy, like he's new here. Let's give him a warm welcome." Um, that was something that I. I definitely did not expect. And I, I, I was at this, uh, this conference, it's called social media marketing world in San Diego in like March. And, uh, this guy, Pat Flynn, he was the keynote speaker, huge into social media and everything. And he just started this Pokemon YouTube page, like couple years ago. And that's kind of been his main thing. Um, it's called uh, deep pocket monster. And, um, he said in his keynote that before he posted his first video, he spent like months in the community, you know, watching other people's videos, commenting on them, joining live streams, like Twitch live streams, YouTube live streams, um, and just getting his name out in the community so that when he did post his first video, it wasn't like there's, you know, 17 viewers or whatever. It, it was like, or 17 views. It was like, there's 3000 views because mm -hmm. he kind of did the work beforehand. And I feel like, uh, I mean, with a lot of help from you and from Fred and AZ and Zach getting introduced on your, your guys' streams that, that fed into like getting to know ACE and getting to know Pix. Like I, I'll join Pix Stitch's live streams and he'll say what's up to me. Like we've been friends for seven years and we've never met but that's a testament to not my 
uh, streams by any means, but everyone else's and me being active in other people's streams. Mm -hmm. Um, so that was not something that I expected, but I'm definitely glad that I took the time to not just like get caught up in the emotion and be like, all right, I'm doing my first live stream tonight. Let's do it. And like, We'll figure it out after that. But uh, it was a little bit more intentional of let me spend some time with this community first and get to know them. Yeah. And then I'll um, start doing live streams. Yeah. That is. And then when I was live, they just rallied around me. It was awesome. Something that I've noticed over the years being on Twitch is success for when you start streaming really starts when you build those relationships in the community that you're wanting to be involved in. And so some of yeah. the best creator, like starts I've seen for creators are people who were already involved one way or another. They could have been a moderator mm -hmm. for someone who mm -hmm. already streams. They just could have been a regular in a channel that you saw all the time. Yeah. But those are the types of, People who then, if they decide to be a Twitch streamer, often have such a, a strong start. They tend to mm. get a massive boost in followership, viewership. They, they also tend to get affiliate pretty quickly. And yeah. some of that comes built into the Lego community on Twitch. That's pretty standard for most people who yeah. are involved in the lego community and then decide to stream or maybe they're or vice versa maybe they're a streamer they start streaming lego but once they like connect with the rest of the lego community here they're all those metrics go up and um mm. it's 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 great sometimes it can backfire in that it can potentially create some false expectations potentially that it'll always sure. be that way. Sure. Sure. Which yeah, is absolutely. which which is one thing I've also seen in this community because we will rally around people. We'll give you that boost. But then after mm -hmm. that, it's kind of up to you if you're able to. I was to, just about to say that. It's, yeah. it's really up to you, you know, to like exactly. be consistent and do the live streams and put in the work. Put in the um, work. Exactly. Yeah. So, that's a really great point. It, yeah. And I've been I've been involved with this community for about two, two plus years. And it never fails. I always see that. And then sometimes you see people who yeah. do get that boost. And then we never see them again. Yeah, I was just about to ask that. Are there people that just kind of like dip out after that because they they just kind of like fall off or whatever? It's it's hard to know exactly why, but yeah, of course. Of course I would. Course. I think potentially in in a lot of cases, there are. We have set to build here in, in the chat. He's saying yes. I I was going to say, <laughs> he's like yes. Yeah. I was going to say that it. It, it, wouldn't su <laughs> it wouldn't it wouldn't it wouldn't surprise me to be honest because I yeah. think there's something there's something that requires some persistence and grit when it comes to streaming honestly yeah sure especially with the mm -hmm. way <coughs> Twitch does like Twitch does this whole thing where you know they'll email you your stats afterwards if you want it which I turn oh, right off oh really oh. Yeah, oh I, gosh, I turned those I, on no, thinking you. No, I turned no, those on thinking no, you would be no. super useful. No, no, no. But then after a bad stream, <laughs> that is the last. Away from that me. is the last keep, thing keep I want. Keep them away. Keep that is them the, away. That is the last thing I want. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I quickly oh turned. I quickly. Like a, that's nightmare fuel for me. I quickly Jeez. turned them off because. Yeah, seriously. <laughs> I was like, oh, this will be super useful. Like. This is yeah, 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 sure, and sure, then the time sure. that I get the stream where it's like, cool, you had an average of three viewers. And I was like, ah, where do I, where do I turn this off? <laughs> it's, it's like on the website trying to find the off button for that. But it's definitely one of those. Yeah. Yeah. I, and I, I never looked 
never looked back. And so, <laughs> which is so funny because then I signed up for another analytics thing just to like look for trends in my viewership. And by default, yeah. they email you. And not only do they email you, I won't name the service. Not only do they email you, they rate your stream based on your analytics. And that that is oh. even worse. It rates Wait, it rate out of 10. Stream, like just in general or against other get, ones of your streams or in other, general other people's streams in general and it has some weird algorithm that's like based on your viewership yeah. and how long people stayed in your stream and your average viewer count and follows that you had a <laughs> yeah you got like an eight out of ten i'm like sweet <laughs> that's interesting and i turned that off too that's really interesting yeah, yeah. i'm sure that it drives some people though absolutely right? because everyone gives everyone puts different meaning behind things um and for some people i'm sure that like when they are a high achiever in school or something that's something that will will push them to be better in the future yeah um for me it's kind of tough because it's almost like what what did I do last stream to get that that get that grade, so to speak? Where like mm -hmm. if I got an A, if I got an A on a on an exam, I knew it was because I studied this much and I went to office hours and this and that and whatever else. Um, but when I'm on a stream, I feel like there are some things that I do that are intentional. But for the most part, I'm just chilling. I'm building some Lego and hanging out. And, uh, and that's about it. There's not too much intentionality behind what I'm doing. Yeah. So I would, I would turn all of those off. That'd be terrible. Oh yeah. I, I learned very quickly that that was not, I want to look at those analytics on my own terms, but I don't need an email well, 10 minutes after the stream. You, did you, did you, uh, did you do this between the last time that I was on and this time? Um, before, before all that. Before, okay. The yeah, reason yeah. that I ask is because um, when we, on our last episode, we had talked about what if there's like a website that, you know, graded every single one of your your uh, pieces of content, you know? Yeah, yeah, And like, yeah. that's exactly, that's exactly yeah, yeah. it. That's I didn't think that's about it, it in those terms because you're not wrong, but it did, it, yeah. does, it does do it out of 10. It does do it out of 10. So it, it gives you Jeez. a number score. Wow. And uh, it's so funny because like when you get like a nine, out of 10 which is just i think you're better better and like better stats through the analytics than your usual it'll be like nine or ten out of ten and it'll be like cool but then like when you get the email that's like four out of ten like that's cool yeah that's yeah thanks man <laughs> 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 yeah and especially like i i could just imagine you know like if if i got a bad grade and then the next dream i was like super energetic and i yeah. still got a bad grade i would just be like all right screw you're this. like thanks this thanks this is the worst. who asked for this who asked, who asked? For this? yeah who, who would <laughs> sign up for this stuff? who would put themselves through that yeah. you would more i did you would and i'm out apparently <laughs> yeah Good, good. That does uh, not that does not help anything. No, it in doesn't. my opinion, at least. I don't know. Yeah. Fireheart had a quick question about the types of Lego that you built. So for those that that don't know, Rob, I'll let you. I mean, I'll let you do a quick summary of the things that you like to build. I mean, I already, for yeah. the most part, know. Star Wars is what what sparked it, and it's funny because I've started uh, making a lot more content about Harry Potter stuff recently. And uh, I haven't heard anyone say this, but I feel like some people are like, all right, Rob just, you know, found Harry Potter. And all of a sudden, like, he's this huge fan. He buys <laughs> all the Lego sets now and trashes on Star Wars. Um, <laughs> but I swear I've been I have been uh, a Harry Potter fan and a Harry Potter Lego fan since I was a little kid. There are pictures of me getting the Hogwarts sets and Quidditch <laughs> sets and stuff like that. Harry Potter has always been uh, a big part of how my my family bonds. Yeah. Um, we, we 
I have vivid memories of, you know, reading the books. We would all go to my parents' room and we would read a chapter of the book before we went to bed. That was a very big thing. Uh, we went to Borders the the night of uh, the release of Deathly Hollows. We stayed up till midnight. It was a big deal because I was much younger then. Um, so Harry Potter has has uh, been a lot of my recent purchases. I haven't purchased a lot of uh, Star Wars stuff recently. Mm. And then um, I've been loving the Disney stuff, the Disney 100 stuff. Lego's oh, yeah. been crushing it with the Disney 100 sets. So those are my main three. You can see I, I got like the Marvel or the, the Guardians of the Galaxy ship. Uh, the DeLorean is right there. The Up House, but that's also a Disney 100 set. Uh, Friends is right there. Um, so if there's a set that I think is cool, I'll typically buy it. But man, Lego has been doing such a good job with their 18 plus sets. Oh, yeah. It's like, I got to I got to relax, relax. Just, yep. just chill, man. OK. Yeah. Um, so those those would be my main three. If I had to like pick three themes, it would be Star Wars, Harry Potter and the Disney Disney 100 line. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. I I love uh, I love I love Star Wars. I love Marvel and like a, a bunch of the random. Like 18 plus things that come out just it just kind of depends on on what, what it is, but generally I'm down for it. I have been buying the architecture sets, really, which I never thought I would say. But what I'm going to do is when I get the world map, I order the world map. Once I get that, I'm going to put the architecture sets around it um, with all the different different cities uh, that I've that I've visited. And then uh, there's like Singapore that's out right now. I've, I haven't been to Singapore before, but uh, I'll get that one eventually and just keep it in my backlog until I go there. And then when I get back from the vacation, I'll have something to look forward to back home, which will be building the set after I've, after I've been there, put them up on the wall. So I like that idea. Uh, yeah. Yeah. It's, I saw a couple pictures of it. I saw, um, mm -hmm. What's uh, Beyond the Brick? I think it's Beyond the Brick. Uh, they posted a video of someone that had done it. And so it's by no means an original idea, but I saw it and was like, that is so sick. I'm definitely going to do that. Because it combines two of my favorite things, travel and, and Lego. Yeah. No, I like that a lot. I really, uh, and yeah. I, I think I've seen that as well. And that's just such a cool idea. So I, I can't wait to see how that turns out for, for your yeah. version of it. And so also, the other thing with that is um, I used to have literally all of my Lego in the the front room of my apartment. And so when you would walk in, it would be like kind of overwhelming. Like just you just walk into basically a Lego store, you know? Yeah. And uh, so I was like, OK, you know, I, I have some 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 people over some ladies. It's, it's, you know, it's oh, oh. <laughs> and so I, I real, but I realized I was like, okay, so this is a good, this is a good segue. If I have the world map and all of the, all of the architecture sets, you know, they'll see that first. Yeah. Like, oh my gosh, that's so cool. Da, 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 da. Yeah. And then it's a good segue into the, like, I collect Lego. By the way. You everything else that I yeah. Yeah. By the way. By you the some way. Other Just a couple other Lego sets. It's nothing crazy, but. Nothing crazy. Yeah. <laughs> no, the, yeah, no, yeah, yeah. No, it's fine. It's fine. Oh. So, <laughs> sure. Brixalot says, "What are your thoughts on the Avengers Tower?" I don't know. I don't know if you have opinions on that. Um, you know, I, I don't really. Um, I think it looks. I think it looks great. Yeah. And again, like, I think that expectations destroy. And appreciation um, makes you enjoy things much more. Um, and a lot of people, myself included, when there's a, a rumored set or a leaked set uh, of what the idea is for the set, people have all of these um, 
expectations of what the set should look like. And uh, of course, they're entitled to those. But mm-hmm. then when the set comes out, it doesn't reach their expectations. And then so then they just say, oh, it sucks. Um, when I heard that there was an Avengers Tower coming out, I I envisioned basically exactly what is is going to be released and then thought nothing else of it until the pictures were actually released. That's for for me has has uh stopped me from buying certain sets and then later on I'll buy it and I'll be like, "Oh my gosh, this was super fun. I don't know why I was hating on it." You know, specifically the 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 Razor Crest Right, I I probably hated on the Razor Crest more than anyone else, and then I bought it and built it. And I was like, that was the best Lego build that I've ever experienced. And I remember. I take this. back literally, literally everything that I said. I take it all back, and I'm an idiot. I remember and seeing some old old footage of you talking talking about it. <laughs> And talking then trash, you bro. were you were talking talk- trash. I remember seeing talking some old trash. videos, and I was like. Oh, you actually got it. And then you like you got it and you completely flipped mm-hmm. your your thoughts yeah. on it. And 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 also with expectations, I remember literally the first time that I saw a picture of the Venator, my thoughts were that's sick. The next UCS set we bet we get better be a pod racer or something from the prequel trilogy. And I was like, whoa, what are you? Let's just enjoy the Venator. Like, let's not make any expectations, Robert. Let's chill out. Let's enjoy the Venator for what it is. And then, you know, we'll get to the next UCS and what that will be when we get there. Mm -hmm. Um, But it was literally like appreciation, expectation right Mm -hmm. away, which uh, so I still struggle with it. Um, It's not like I'm this, you know, perfect saint up on my uh, up on my. uh, um, in your in in your Avengers Tower, in my, Howard. In my Avengers Tower, exactly. <laughs> but I think it looks great. I saw for the first time today the minifigures and the cape, specifically the cape for Vision. I'm so excited for that. Mm. That looks dope. I don't think it will be a day one purchase for me. I've been buying lots of Lego. I'm like, right, I've relax. I've bought so much Lego okay. lately, and yeah. some of it isn't even new, but. Or like new releases, and so mm-hmm. that in a in a convention trip later this week, I'm so tapped mm. out in terms of yeah. spending. So yeah, it's fine. Yeah, so and that's that's what I mean when I when I when I say that Lego has been crushing it, especially with their 18 plus sets. You know, on my list, I've got Diagon Alley, I've got the uh, Disney Castle, Venator. Um, Moss Eisley Cantina that that's been out for a while. I just haven't haven't bought it. Mm-hmm. Um, the uh, Disney icons, uh, villain icon set. I'm trying to think. There's well, Avengers Tower. Like that's six huge, huge sets. Uh, that are you know all over four hundred bucks, three hundred bucks, like, except for uh, Disney villains. But mm-hmm. regardless, lots of money, lots of money. So it's a little okay. Let's let's be patient. Yeah, let's enjoy I, what we have. Yeah, and yeah, I I I'm so tapped. <laughs> so and and part of it for me, I'm I'm starting to. I used to be the type of person that would was very like proud of my backlog mm-hmm. and like oh I've got all of these sets out there still sealed in my backlog and now I'm like. Why am I even bragging about that? Like, just go and build them. Yeah. So I've been working through my backlog. I have, I have maybe like three or four sets left in my in my backlog, um, to build, and uh, I'm actually kind of excited to not have a backlog. Then I might be spending a little bit more because then I'm like, well, I need something for Twitch. But <laughs> <We'll see. laughs> only time will tell. Only time will tell. <laughs> that's a that's a great point, actually. How has your Lego purchasing been affected by your Twitch streaming? Because I imagine there's been mm. some impact there. You know, not too much. Um, I I think that I realized early on 
there are other things that I can do that are Lego related on Twitch that aren't necessarily building a set that I've purchased. Mm -hmm. Um, I haven't done it for a while because I've been so focused on getting the Gringotts set done and that took several, several long streams. Um, but you know, I, I, I was doing like rankings, um, and ranking different, uh, set categories. Mm -hmm. Um, and people seem to like that for the most part. And I'm, I want to get back into doing that again now that that Gringotts is done. Um, I've also seen people build on studio, which is cool. Like work mm -hmm. on mocks and stuff. Yeah. Um, that's something that I plan on doing in the future. Cause I've been working on a mock in studio, um, that has kind of been pushed to the side with, uh, with everything else. It's, it's, it would be interesting to look at, you know, how many sets I've bought since I started streaming on Twitch versus before, but I can't say that it's too many, um, more. I haven't been like, you know, in the Lego aisle at Target thinking like, I need to buy this set because I don't have anything to build. Right. Um, which is good, good. which is definitely, yeah. definitely good. Uh, cause I could see myself getting sucked into that that trap for sure yeah um but and then there are also also people will will disassemble sets on on twitch i've seen so there there are many other things that that people can do on twitch besides just building the set yeah which is uh uh encouraging for me because if i didn't know that then i would have just thought like okay i need to buy a bunch more sets so i can build them um I don't know. I don't think, I mean, especially for some newer sets that are out, maybe people watch or like tune into a live stream to watch that being built. But I do think that a lot of viewership comes from just wanting to hang out with that person and hear their thoughts about whatever, or talk to that, that person. Um, and for me too, it's fun to like talk to a creator that I enjoy and get live instant feedback versus like a comment that doesn't even get seen or, you know, I, I try my best to respond to comments. Um, but with how Instagram shows like notifications and stuff, I see like two comments a day, which I'm not a huge fan of, but it is what it is. Yeah. And I try not to look at my notifications other than to just like make the, little dot thing go away because that annoys me same i don't like having that dot i don't there. like those yeah. I, don't know, out of there. I don't know how yeah. some people will let, leave all those notifications up no. some people do that no yeah no you make yeah, a really good point though about like people tuning into a stream more so because they enjoy the content from the creator not specifically yeah the newest set or a current build that's all the talk. Although mm -hmm. that can sometimes be the driving force there, but generally it's, they really enjoy the community and the streamer and the things that they talk about, yeah. as well as you said, just getting that real time feedback based on the fact that you're all online together Anything. at the same time. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Yeah. And it's the same reason that, you know, if there's a set I'm really excited about, I'll watch three or four different reviews on it they're all saying the same thing it's all it's, they all got sent the same set but i appreciate that person's creative style and also their opinion about it so i want to hear what they have to say and so i'll watch a few different um creators you know reviews yeah absolutely and i think you hit hit that perfectly in terms of it's very similar across the board, right? When when you have a new set that comes out and you see all the reviews come online. You see the same things. You see the same. same they all generally hit the same points on a given set. And so mm -hmm. once you've seen a couple, you've mostly seen them all at that point. Yeah. Yeah, yeah it's true. It's true. And there are some creators that do some really fun things like... Uh, Oh gosh, is it Solid Brick Studios? He's a big YouTuber. Mm. Um, he's in the land. And 
one thing that he did was he he made his venator an imperial venator and so he took out all the red and replaced it with gray bricks um which I thought was ironic and funny because everyone always complains that that Star Wars is all just a bunch of gray ships. Yeah. So he literally took any color that was on the ship of all and the made colors, it gray. Of but, all the colors. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, of all the colors to remove and replace it with. Yeah. Um, but that's a that's a fun that's a fun thing that I saw that and was like, that's super cool. I will definitely watch that five minute video or seven minute video. I believe that when anyone does something like that, that that's perfect, honestly, because when you, it, I mean, it's nice to get the review. It's nice to get mm-hmm. a breakdown and thoughts from an individual, but mm-hmm. it's really cool to see other spins on that takes on, on those, those new releases, because then it makes you stop scrolling right through all these reviews. And you're like, Oh, what, what did they actually do here? Mm-hmm. And that's, mm-hmm. that's, the difference that's that's what would make me stop and watch it it's nice to see someone that isn't just reviewing off a set and like checking off the boxes Mm because i definitely feel that when i'm doing reviews sometimes it's like cool show the build show the minifigures give my opinion rate it what 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 do we think final thoughts review done Mm -hmm. you know um it's easy to get into that uh cadence Mm -hmm. if you will Mm-hmm. But everyone has their own style to it, which which attracts a certain person to a certain creator. Um, we talked about last time, like goals and stuff. One was really figuring out like what's my style on YouTube, and I feel like I've started to get into that a little bit more and understand what my style is compared to to someone else. When I realized what my style was, I was like, that's it. That is it. Okay. I'm doubling down on that thing. Yeah. And off to the races. Um, so it's been fun. And I've been posting a lot more to, to YouTube. Nikki bricks has been someone that, uh, I have kind of locked arms with and we've been, you know, pushing each other. We had a little contest last month for whoever, uh, Whoever uploaded more long form videos, uh, that person would get like a little minifig, right? Oh, that's cool. And then this month, yeah. And then this month, it's uh, whoever loses has to post on their Instagram and just say, you know, Rob the Builder is the best content creator of all time and he's a genius. And then that's just it. <laughs> <laughs> that's it. We got that from uh, Brooklyn Nine Nine. Uh, yeah, I've ever seen Brooklyn yeah. Nine Nine. I love it. But uh, yeah, so that's that's our little wager that we have going on, and that's something that you know inspires me to uh, to create something and get a video posted. I like that, man. I really do, and I think yeah. that it's a nice mechanism to encourage your peers to do more or work a little harder or do something a little different potentially. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And, and truthfully, I I'd love to see more. <laughs> I love, I love that dude. I think that's a great idea. You yeah. meant, you mentioned that you have a better grasp on the direction you want to take with YouTube. Do you want to yeah. ex- expand on that a little bit? Yeah, it took a lot of uh, trial and error. Ever since college, I've always wanted to be a YouTuber and make YouTube videos. I always found the editing process to be super fun. And I honestly now still am getting comfortable, you know, holding a DSLR camera in in the Lego store or at, at Walmart or whatever in front of me and like talking to this 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 camera lens. Um so I'm still very awkward with it. <laughs> but uh <laughs> but um that is really a means to an end to then create my final vision in the editing the editing process. Mm. Um and I would assume that a lot of people are the same way as far as just like talking to a camera that feel weird or whatever. Right. 
I went to the Lego store opening with uh, Emily and Ross and Jean and Josh and uh, Emily in her vlog video added this super awkward clip of me recording a TikTok and lip syncing the audio. And it was just silent. It was basically like silent. And I wanted to text her and be like, Emily, why did you do me like I that? I remember this, but, actually. I saw that. Yeah, I it's saw like towards the moment. beginning of the video. Yeah, it's like, yo, that's yeah. Rob. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, oh my god, Emily's, you know, fun subscribers are gonna be like, who's this awkward dude that's like <laughs> who is this I'm guy? Thinking, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um no, but it's hilarious. And I was I was honestly just excited to be a part of their video. Oh so yeah. Like, it's fine. It's yeah. Fine. Yeah. Um but uh <laughs> yeah, I still feel very awkward. And it I had said last time that I'd take an inspiration from other creators. And tried to adopt their style. And for some, it was like, it just takes too much time, you know, with the editing and everything. Um, and for some, it was just like, that's not me. And I don't like that. Uh, so really, really what it, what my style is and is going to be, and you'll see it more. I, I've been kind of lazy with the last few um videos that I've uploaded, but something that my brothers and I do, we'll quote movies and we quote movies all the time. And then we'll be like, quote, yeah. you know what, you know what? Yeah. And we like test each other. Right. And, uh, so I have just this, I don't know, skill that has, uh, adapted over time of speaking through movie references. Yeah. And so that's what my style will be is kind of adding funny little clips uh from movies into the uh interjected in uh, throughout each each YouTube video. It's this you. Is, it's definitely I yeah. I mean I have I had yeah. the the pleasure of hanging out with you for a weekend and yeah, yeah. That's very we had that's a great a, time. <laughs> dude, that's a very rob thing to do. So I'm I'm really glad that you're starting to find your place within the, like the Lego niche on YouTube and, and here on Twitch as well. But yeah. finding yeah. your voice is really super important. And I think that's where a lot of people get lost, I think, when it comes to yeah. development and growth as a creator, where you kind of start, like you said, emulating a lot of the creators that you enjoy to kind of get to where mm -hmm. you eventually want to be which is some yeah. version of you that might have been influenced yeah. by these other creators. Yeah. And I think when when someone is making content and it's not them, yeah. that's that's when that's when burnout happens faster. I don't I I still think that even if you are genuinely 100% being yourself, you can have uh, a version of burnout, whether it be due to uh, not actually wanting to make the content or um, external circumstances, mm -hmm. you know, life. Sometimes it just kind of happens to get in the way sometimes, you know? But I think that when you're not being your genuine self on camera, burnout happens faster because it's like you have to like there's more energy on. there's more energy there's required. more energy that goes into it and and then you don't look forward to because no one wants to be someone that they're not mm -hmm. but then you have to turn on a camera and be someone that you're not for people to like your stuff yeah so it's easy to not not want to do why would it why would anyone want to do that yeah um so that's super important for anyone making content on any platform is like, do not lose yourself. Stay true to, you yeah. know, who you are. Cause that's, cause that's also then what attracts the right people to you. And that gives you energy. Yep. It Absolutely. gives it and it taketh away. I so. agree with you a hundred percent. This this yeah. always goes back to the conversation I had with uh, Pan Fred Nudo, our friend Fred, who yeah. in our early early days of this show, we we touched on it even then, and it's that we we all feel like we maybe have to be on right 
or we have mm-hmm. to be entertain entertaining and so we start mm-hmm. to do those things that maybe outside of our usual self or we start to like you said emulate other creators who do those things that can bring in those views and then it becomes mm-hmm. exhausting it becomes mm. almost a chore when you go to push that button you're like oh man i have to really put on my show right i need to perform mm. for the camera and so mm. yep i've been there another brick and apple perform for the camera yeah absolutely mm-hmm. and then but then there's that like when you're on stage and you're performing there's a certain give and take from the energy that the audience gives and then you can then give it back to them. But then, like when you're, you know, looking at a piece of plastic with some glass in a mirror and like that's the thing that you're giving your energy to, of course, you know, it's not going to. It's not the back. same at all. Yeah. And it, Pan Fan News said, I, I do the Nuno dance in real life. Anyway, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Absolutely. And like you can, t- you, you can just tell when you see Fred do the noodle dance. You're like, yeah, he just breaks out in the middle of Starbucks doing that, you know, <laughs> just, just in line, waiting for his venti vanilla iced latte. He just breaks out the the he noodle just, dance. He just does the noodle happiness. dance. Yeah, love that guy. Which I love. I love it. I love it. <laughs> AZ Pinoy we'll says, AZ Pinoy says, if he hits partner, he's Ooh. eating bullet. Is that what you're saying? We Ooh. now have record of it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, here's the thing that I learned hmm. being live on Twitch. You got to be careful about what you say on live. <laughs> because if you're not, you will end up becoming one of Zach M. Rutledge's uh, many redeems, which I honestly am honored to to be a part of his streams on a, <laughs> a weekly basis. Um, but uh, yeah, I definitely learned that the hard way because I got like a notification like Zach M. Rutledge has, you know, what what's it called when you like cut part of the stream? Clipped it. Do you know? What I'm t- yeah, he clipped it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he clipped your your stream, and I was like, oh no. Oh yeah, that's up, he's up to he's up to no good with that. <laughs> I feel like Amish Ace is super sensitive to that. Like he knows when someone has clipped. Like he'll <laughs> I've heard him yell that out in the middle of stream. Is who clipped stuff? Who oh. clipped? Yeah. Does it tell you? There are the ways to the stream. There there are ways to get that information. That's hilarious. when it goes down. As someone who has been featured in a number of these streams as redeems, I pretty much early on. <laughs> Yeah, the court, the court, the (laughs) court. I gotta add that one to my stream. I knew that was because it's such a freaking great one. It's so awesome. I knew, I knew the moment I, dude, you crushed that. You crushed it. (laughs) You crushed it, dude. You crushed it. For those that don't know, there is footage of me, um, with (laughs) dancing in, in my seat and, doing call outs on top of this this song um where they call it is it's a clip of a filipino man uh saying corn corn beef 19 instead of uh covid 19 and there's yeah. there was a trap remix done of of that clip and i was corn dancing beef. to it so corn it's beef. there's a whole thing it exists corn it's on beef. zach's channel <laughs> yeah it's so great it's so great <laughs> it uh, happens man it happens. Yeah. And totally. you know, what's what's wild is I hear from other people in the greater Lego community who view that exact thing where like you're featured on like a Zach M. Rutledge or an Amish A stream. You've made yeah. it you've made it if yeah. you, you are featured in there. I if don't personally redeemed. see it that way, but you well, know, I understand where people are coming from. And and here's here's the other thing is like we just talked about how you you don't want to you don't want to entertain, but you want to be entertaining. Mm-hmm. That makes sense. Yeah. Where where you don't want to have to be on, but you still want people to enjoy your stream and you know think it's funny or whatever. So like if someone makes a redeem, 
of something that I said. In my opinion, that's that's like the ultimate praise of like I thought this was hilarious and entertaining. Mm-hmm. I want to add it to my stream so it can also be entertaining there as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so I see it as a compliment. I think it, it is definitely Plus a mine compliment. is also me just popping up saying, uh, what, 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 "What do I say?" I'm your daddy. I'm your daddy. I'm your daddy. <laughs> <laughs> so now Zach, Zach is Zach is my daddy now, and I'm his. It's like a back and forth. Don't ask. It's a mutual it's like a back thing. to the future type thing that we did <laughs> to make it happen. But no further questions. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I there's a lot of those times where I, I've said something. Fred said this in chat. I'm tic- typically oblivious to and then I find out after you see the he sees the reading. There are a lot of those times that I've had where didn't expect it. And then it's it's very much almost an iconic thing now that's a part of that community in, in certain ways. Like there's yeah. for a very long time in Ace's stream, he came into my stream one night and I, I call, I shouted out Ace and this is right after he got waxed. And so (laughs) it was based on a charity thing he had to have uh, his wife wax his armpit as a whole thing. <laughs> right? And so the whole thing happens on his stream. Like a day or two later, he pops up in my stream, my chat to say hi. How did, how did he not mention that? I, I texted all you guys and said, what should I do for, a, for my oh, man. All charity you have, thing? I'm, he has so much. Yeah. He has so many things. I know. But, but you also have to hate yourself. Him. You also have to hate yourself if you want to do that. Yeah, no, I don't, I, I don't want to do the wax. But, oh, my God. But he, he came into my chat. Wouldn't it make me more aerodynamic, though, right, on my runs? No, unlikely. So maybe. I don't know. <laughs> I don't think it's worth it, man. <laughs> yeah, but anyways, anyways. So but he shows he, up. He jumped into your stream. And I go, shout out to Alma Chase, by the way. He's freshly waxed. And that was a throwaway comment. <laughs> And he, oh, in that gosh. moment, clipped it. And to this day, oh, in, in his stream, that's a thing that you could do, like, exclamation waxed. And it pops up my little face in the corner of me saying, oh, shout out Amish Ace, by the way. He's freshly waxed. It's a whole thing. Gotta write this down. But there, the, it, it, there's waxed. so many of these <laughs> moments Jeez. where stuff like that happens, and I don't even think about it. Same with, like, Zach has one of me saying, um, look at that. That was horrible. And I don't even remember when or how that came up in my stream. I said it, and that's yeah. just a thing that's in his, as a redeem. That's incredible. So, it's a whole thing. It happens. Yeah. It happens. So That's hilarious. I've, I, I've learned really early that everything's fair game. So. Mm-hmm. It happens. That's so true. Everything is fair game. All is fair in love and war. Yeah. And Twitch, it's a war. And tw- tw- <laughs> Twitch is... Just kidding. Twitch, no, Twitch no, memes no. are a war. No. Twitch memes are a war, sure. I can get on board with that. <laughs> <laughs> how, have you, how, have you, how have you been feeling, dude? Have you? How's everything been with you? I know that we've talked about... Getting into Twitch and kind of getting used to that. I mean, you've been you've been doing this social media thing for a while on TikTok and Insta, and now YouTube yeah. and Twitch. How has that been for you? It's been interesting, especially recently. So I had a conversation with my mom. My mom's a a therapist. Um, so I called her and was like, "I need you to be a therapist for a second. But for legal purposes, I'm not going to pay you. Um, <laughs> she was like, "All right, I, that's fair." Yep. Um, but I, I basically asked her, you know, what, um, what would you say to someone that values not being rejected more than being loved? And um, it was after the conventions that I went to this summer, I kind of had this realization that I was like, I would rather be liked than loved or hated. 
which is like looking back on stuff that I've made, why I hesitate to share my opinions on things because then it's like it opens the door to either someone someone saying, I totally agree with you, absolutely, or someone saying, no, you're wrong. Your opinion sucks. I don't respect it. Mm. Da, da, da. And, uh, and I asked this question to my mom specifically with, um, in terms of like getting into an intimate relationship. I've been single for, for quite some time. And I realized that I would rather just not be rejected than be loved. It's more, it's, I value not getting rejected more than actually being in a loving, thriving, exciting relationship. And what she said to me was very interesting, which was, it starts with self-love. It starts with loving yourself first, um, which is much easier said than done. What I what I realized with that was the when I would post a video, I would consistently be looking at the number of likes and the number of views that it got. Um, and not even from like an analytical, okay, you know, how, how does, how do the, you know, I talked about last time, the 10% ratio, um, and, uh, how did it perform against other videos? It, it, it was literally just like, you know, did it hit 10 K views or did it hit a thousand views or whatever? And so I really had to do a lot of self-reflection of why, why am I, looking at the views and why is it so important me to me to know how many views every single video gets and really it was because i was able to get the love and validation that i was yearning for from social media and then i could still value not getting rejected in real life versus you know being loved because uh the the validation i got from videos was like enough you know it wasn't great it wasn't incredible it wasn't outstanding but it was like it's fine i can yeah. i can live with that and it took a lot of time um a lot of work on on myself to get to the point at where i am now where the last uh, however many videos that I've uploaded on Instagram, I have no idea where any of the videos are at as far as likes and, and views. Like I said, I, I try and comment or respond to comments back as much as I can, especially when it is like a question or something. But I, I, I realized maybe like a, a week ago that I wasn't looking at how many how many views I was getting. I was like, all right, first step complete mm. on to the next thing. But that's that's the slippery slope that you play with posting to social media. And it's one of those reasons that once you get a, a large following, you feel obligated to to make more videos and level up your game and all that stuff. Um because you want the views and you, you want them to say, Oh, don't unfollow me. Don't unfollow me. You know, and you're, you're all caught up in number of followers and likes and views and all that stuff. It's like it, we, we were talking about it before we went live, but it's like the, uh, you know, the movie where someone gets three wishes from the genie and they make a wish and they want, they want fame and they want money and they want a super hot wife. And, and they're not like, like, specific with exactly what they want and uh then it all kind of backfires and the paparazzi follows them around and it's super annoying and all of their family members ask for money and they have a hot wife but the wife cheats all the time because she's you know unfulfilled or whatever right. um and it's like you got to be careful what what you wish for and i by no means am saying oh i'd rather be you know have 
150 followers. But I am saying that once you get to certain milestones, you have to be aware of what your mindset is around your following and keeping them entertained um, and also not losing not losing yourself along with that. And uh, I feel like I'm in much better of a place than um, than I was even just, you know, three, four weeks ago because of the the work that I've been doing behind the scenes to get to that place personally, but, uh, outside of of social media. Yeah, so it's it's been a, a very interesting roller coaster of of emotions the last uh, last couple months. And especially like since moving, you know, my one of my best friends, he said to me, because we were having a conversation about it, I was like, the first four months since moving here, I feel like I was just I was going through it, man. I was going through all types of emotions, happiness, sadness, frustration, anger, fear, excitement, fulfillment. And and he was like, he just said to me, Yeah, that's because you can't heal in the place that you were hurt. And I was like, oof. So yeah, I've been I've been working through it a lot, but I'm really enjoying the journey that I'm on. And before, like people would ask me how I like Austin. And the first couple months, like, I didn't really do anything, you know? Like, I didn't I met some people, I did some things. It's not like I was like walking around Austin, Texas, like, oh, what's that? Oh, there. Um, I was like in my apartment like a lot and and not really doing anything and kind of just feeling sorry for myself. And and so when someone would ask, you know, how do you like Austin? I would like be like, it's great, and immediately default to talking about the weather. You know, just some some small talk trash, which I I hate small talk. I hate it. Which is, I, I posted on my Instagram the other day, like other things that I enjoy to do. And I talked about going out on the lake. I love skiing. I love hockey. I love uh, Disney. And um, of course, I love running. And that was a way to connect with my community outside of Lego. Because Lego is great and it's awesome. But I want, like, if I go to a convention, I want people to come up to me and have... Um, other common interests to bring up like, Oh, I love watching hockey too. My favorite team is this, you know, or I, I love skiing too. I've been skiing since I was a little kid. Where's your favorite place to ski? Not just, is this your first convention? Did you bring any mocks? You know, no, 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 no. The usual. It's like the same four questions over, yeah, the, it's over and over and over again. It's the and same like, questions. while I love meeting new people, I'm like, ah, there's, there's, ah. More, there's more to you than, yeah, yeah, the Lego yeah, just or I had a lot of people that uh you know commented on those stories and uh they're like, Oh, I love the NHL, like my team is uh Dallas Stars. I'm like, uh pff, nah. Or or um uh you know, I had people message me about golf. Um I had people message me about about skiing and that was something that I realized because I've been posting a lot more running content because that is really the the thing along with Lego that dominates my my hobbies um but I was like let me let me show my community what else I'm interested in because Lego really actually only takes up like two hours of my week three hours of my week depending on, on the week um so I wanted to wanted to share more more about that I guess. Um, so yeah. I love all of that, man. And I think it says a lot that you've been working so hard on yourself here. It's, it, yeah. it definitely takes a lot of energy and focus to see those things that you're, you're mm -hmm. dealing with and actually, working on them. And and as I'm sure you can attest, it's never anything that's completely done. It's always a work in progress. It's mm. always something that you'll be yeah. working on. Yeah. Totally. Yeah.
Totally. Which is part of the, the fun that life is. Mm -hmm. is it's consistently being tested and, and, um, seeing how you react and adjust, um, based on lessons learned. And, uh, I, I, I went through, I went through a period where I felt like I was hating on Lego a lot, like around the time, like the Razor Crest came out and, you know, I was hating on the Razor Crest. I was hating on the land speeder and I was hating on this and I was hating on that. And through a lot of meditation, I realized like I'm hating on all of these things that are so surface level. And I'm getting pissed off at things like someone cutting me off in traffic and blowing up for no reason and to no one other than to myself when the real reason was because I was pissed off that I was still living at my parents' house. I had a job that I enjoyed but wasn't making a ton of money from. I wasn't in, in a relationship. I didn't have like a serious girlfriend. I hadn't had a serious girlfriend for the last four years or whatever. And most of my friends had moved away. And those were the actual things that I was mad about. Not that Lego made another Luke's land speeder. Like that's not actually enough to piss me off to right. make a video about it. Like that's not actually what it was, but it was a vehicle for me to get my anger out yep. without having to go to the root of the problem, which is much scarier. You, you really have to like sit with your emotions and almost almost view your emotions from a third party hmm. like i remember once i got to the point where i would get cut off and i was actually in tune with my emotions instead of getting pissed off i would i would like feel anger run through my body and i would say oh i'm angry yeah that's interesting why am i angry well that person just cut me off and it kind of pissed me off. Why am I actually angry? Yep. Oh, it's because X, Y, and Z. Mm -hmm. Okay. Let me work on that versus blowing my lid for no reason and just, you know, burning some gasoline. Just like, pfft. yeah. I definitely feel a lot of that. And I've been there and, you 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 brought up such a good point because a couple years ago i started getting the effects of burnout from mm. work and streaming mm. and while those were big contributors to my mental state it was also just a lot of things it was a lot of things like my relationship with my parents in fam like my 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 parents and my siblings and my relationship with my boss at work and a lot of feelings of uh that were rooted in how i was raised and uh, mm. i had a very messed up view of self self-worth um which was very unfortunate and you know i still i still struggle with that Time to time. I ended up in therapy too. I actually, I, uh, to be real, and a lot of people know this aspect of the story is I quit Twitch for about a year. And mm. it wasn't... I didn't know this. Yeah. It comes up from time to time. I quit, I quit for about a year. I was streaming for almost 15 months, almost every day. And that combined with work burnout and like i said the the relationship i had with some coworkers and my my parents and my siblings it all just kind of piled on it got to the point where like you i was having these moments of either anger or sadness based on things that were happening in my life but those were all very surface level it wasn't because of that thing it was just mm -hmm. a, a trigger of some kind yeah. and then yeah yeah it was it wasn't the real reason why I was unhappy. Yeah. And so the first thing I did, because it was the clearest thing I could do was quit Twitch so I can focus on it 
focus on what was wrong with me. And I used that time to get more sleep and go work out in the morning Mm -hmm. and see a therapist Mm -hmm. once a week. And it, it all boiled down to, and like you said, I came to similar realizations in terms of, and that's where my therapy ended, ended up for me was in those moments with those feelings that I would get. And it's so funny that you said it because my therapist said this exact phrase, let's, let's sit in those feelings for a second. She would be like, let's, let's, let's think about why you're angry or let's think about why you're sad or lonely or whatever the feeling is in that moment, in that session. And I, I think it's, you know, like you said, all those things that were affecting your life and all things affecting my life. And then you pile on content creation on top of it, Mm. which is very like, if you take all the things in our everyday life, that is a stressor. And then you add content creation into it. It is such a catalyst for all the other things that we have going on in our life. For me, it was insecurity. And for me, it was self-worth. Thinking that I was not good enough to have what I had, whether it be at work or on, on Twitch or in my life. And it messes with you, man. And it messes your ability to do and make things. So I, I want to commend you for being able to recognize that and have that conversation with your mom and start focusing on those things. So thank you. Yeah. Thank you for sharing that. Yeah. You focus on the, on the right things. And, and, uh, I always say where focus goes, energy flows and a result shows. And, uh, we can, there's a Dumbledore quote, our words are our most powerful source of magic where they can both create and destroy something along those lines. And we can hypnotize ourselves ourselves on why things should be a certain way or shouldn't be a certain way, or this should have happened, or I should have this, or I shouldn't have this. Um, or, or, or just creating scenarios that haven't even actually happened. And that can, that can mess with you. Yeah. I I always, I, I love, you know, Michael Jordan as an athlete, because if you watch, um, the last dance, he had such a mental fortitude that he could create things with his words and his mind that didn't even happen, but he could convince himself that they did to motivate himself to go out on the court and just obliterate any opponent for Mm -hmm. any reason. There's like a story where someone said like, good game, Mike, and he had lost or whatever, and that pissed him off. And he went out the next night and dropped like 55 points, 56 points, something crazy like that. Man, sitting with your feelings... And your emotions, dude, that's a, that's a lonely place yeah. to be. It's so necessary to do that. My favorite show, Ted Lasso, um, I always got to bring it up. Uh, mm-hmm. But Rebecca, she says something like she's talking to her mom and she says that, you know, ever since uh, getting a divorce, it's been... Uh, She's been so lonely, which has been terrible, but it's necessary for the journey that she's on. Um, can we give a little bit of a trigger warning? Yeah. Is that right? Yeah. You and I talked a little bit about this before we started, and so we wanted to give a, a, yeah. a trigger warning about some suicidal thoughts and and things like that. So um, if you're watching or listening and this is something that you might be sensitive to, I would encourage yeah. you to maybe fast forward or <laughs> mute or um, yeah. we're going to get into some, I think, heavier things here. 
So, yeah. Yeah. So basically as recent as like a month ago, I had been having suicidal thoughts and it wasn't anything serious or anything like looking back on it that I would actually act on. But of course, hindsight being 2020, you know, that's kind of how it starts. Mm -hmm. And, uh, I remember there was a weekend where I saw two videos, which like rocked me to my core. And one, they were both TikToks and one was like a motivational one. And it was, you know, a man has two lives and the second one starts when he realizes he has only one. And I was like, oof, man, that just, boom, to my core. Yeah. And then the other one, for whatever reason, was uh, like a, a 911 call to like a mom and dad, like parents, um, letting them know that their kid had been in an accident and had passed. And, and that one like really shook me. Um, and I went to bed that night and I had a dream that I was in a plane crash. And I remember like in the dream, like the captain comes on the intercom and basically said like, call your parents and let them know you love them. And like right before I woke up, it was just like the plane crashed and uh, I woke up and like, that was, that was the beginning of my second life. Right. Um, and I woke up the next morning and man, the grass was just a little bit greener and the sky was a little bit more blue. I just took a little bit deeper of a breath. And it was just like beauty everywhere. And, you know, the, the, the thoughts that I had, it was, you know, wouldn't it just be easier? Like with, with financial struggles and you're, you're not in a relationship and, and you live in a shitty apartment and like all these, all these things. Um, and I was like, okay, okay. So what, what do I tell myself now? And it was really interesting because it's like, it's, it's little moments when, when you he hear a success story or a failure story, it's not one moment where it's like, that person found success or that person failed. It is a, it's a, a series of decisions and actions that they make one way or another that eventually leads to a boiling point where it's inevitable that they succeed or fail. And it's the same thing with those scary thoughts. Yeah. And so for me, it was like, okay, I'm not at the boiling point yet. I know that. So how do I flip the script? I got to I got to change something. And um it was really interesting. Gene texted me the next morning and uh was like do you want to go out on the boat on my friend's boat? And uh I knew that it was a uh a wake surfing boat and I'd never been wake surfing before and I was like okay if I go on this freaking boat they're going to make me wake surf and I've never done it before. Here's the thing. If you want to be humbled to your core, go wake surfing with a group of strangers because <laughs> I have never been so humbled in my life. <laughs> so we go out on the boat and um, Gene's husband goes out first and crushes it. He'd done it many, many times. And me and, or Gene's husband, Justin, and uh, Todd, who's, the, the guy who owns the boat. They're the only ones that had wake surfed. I hadn't. And then there were three other people that I had never met before and Gene. And uh, so the rest of us had never wake surfed before. So Gene's husband goes, crushes it. I was like, oh. <laughs> I, I like, I like knew I was like, they're going to make me go. They're going to make me go next. 
I just, I've got a feeling. <laughs> and I, I, I tried to, I tried to get someone else to do it. I tried to put off as long as possible, but eventually <laughs> I was like, all right, I just got to put on my life jacket and like see where it takes me. Yeah. Um, I try five times and I just eat water every single time. Don't even get up on the board. I've never been more hydrated in my life because I'm just <laughs> taking water to the face. Yeah. And at a certain point I was like, okay, someone else go. I get me out of this freaking water. And I just sat down in the boat and I was just pissed off because I didn't, didn't get up on the board. And, and so I sat there and I was like, okay, I can accept that as my fate or I can keep trying and I can, I can get up on that board. And so I spent the next, however long it was just visualizing in my mind, like, Visualizing, visualizing myself getting up on the board, visualizing what it would feel like to get up on the board. And then when Todd went, who owned the boat, I made a point to really, really watch him, like watch exactly what he was doing. And what was really interesting was, you know, with all of my research with Twitch and, and starting live streaming, there's only there is a certain point where you cannot do any more research. You just got to go. Mm-hmm. You just got to do it. And what's interesting is the second time that I tried, everyone else had gone. Uh, no one else had gotten up on the board, by the way. No one else was able to do it. Uh, so all of the embarrassment that I was afraid of and felt was not necessary because everyone else did it as well. Um, and instead of being embarrassed for me, they were probably grateful for me. They were like, thank goodness Rob went first and didn't get it. Cause now I don't look as silly. Like yeah. someone I'm, I'm, I'm in good company. Um, but the second time that I, I went out first time I like kind of got up and then I fell. But what was interesting was the first five times, Justin jeans, jeans husband, he was like giving me instruction but he was talking at me. It, it was like stuff that I kind of understood. And I was like, okay, that makes sense. Logically, I get it. I get what you're saying. But then like when you're out there, everything just boom, 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 boom happens so fast that you just get swept up and then you're eating water. So then the sixth time I kind of get up and I was like, I understand what he means now. I understand what he's talking <laughs> about. And we were able to have a conversation and he was talking to me versus at me right and he was because he was like you wait for the board to flip once you hit once the board flip this is this is my generic man giving me instructions voice (laughs) once you hit the the board flip (laughs) once you hit your feet then you gotta like do a crunch and you kind of do a squat and then and then you're up and then you pull yourself you right right and and so then i finally was like okay i understand what he means when you when you feel the board flip okay i get that and then you kind of do like a a crunch into a deadlift and then you pull yourself up with the with the rope and that seventh try boom i got up and it felt exactly how it felt when i visualized getting up on the board um but it was such a small win but it was something that i could be proud of and find take take pride in where i failed and failed and failed and failed and failed and didn't give up and found a way to get up on the board. And I remember thinking to myself, as soon as I got home from my apartment, I can do this. Great. I can pay off my debt. I can, I can find the love of my life. I can get a nicer apartment. And it was different questions that I was telling myself. Instead of, wouldn't it all just be easier? It was, what, what are situations I can put myself in to meet exciting, beautiful, fun, outgoing women. Right. And I was like, oh, okay. I can do this. I can do that. I can do this. I can do that. Okay. How can I be creative in paying off my debt? Okay. I could do this. I could do that. I could do this. I could do that. And it, and it gave me the energy to, to um, make a plan. All this to say, look for the small wins. And it's like, especially with content, you got to celebrate the small things. And the other thing too is 
for the most part, unless you got great friends, no one's going to celebrate it with you. Like yep. you just got to celebrate it on your own. I remember thinking to myself, no one is coming to save you. And that, that was like out on, <laughs> I was out just floating in the water. I had just eaten water for the fifth time. And I was like, no one is coming to save you. You have got to figure this out. You got to find a way. That kind of goes into the, the three S's. Can I, can I go into my three yeah. S's of content yeah. creation? Would love to hear this. Since, since, I, since I was on last time, I've, I've been able to put into words my content strategy. So in order of least to most important, if you're taking any notes, write this down. Classes in session. Um, there's three. There's three S's, and the first one is a strategy. And a strategy is a way to have an input. You have the input, and then you get an output. Think of like a recipe, like a or a strategy, like a recipe. You know, my I, I'm not a baker. I do not bake. I'm not good at it. That's funny. I'm not, I say I'm not good at it. I've never even really tried. But my, my younger cousin Lynn is an incredible baker. Like every time we have a birthday, I'm so excited to go over to their house and eat the chocolate cake because she makes like the best chocolate cake. It is incredible. Now she knows how to bake. I don't know how to bake. If I got her recipe, and I followed the instructions, I would be able to get that output and make a chocolate cake. It mm. probably wouldn't be as good as hers, but I would be able to bake a chocolate cake, right? And right. so that's the same thing as strategy with content creation. You know, it's uh, post four vid short form videos a day. That's something that I, that was the strategy that I did when I first started making content. I post four short form videos a day uh, for, for, Twitch. It could be um, consistently doing a live stream twice a week. That's a strategy. And strategies are great, but strategy is uh, the least important of the three because you can know what to do and still not do it. Right? Like, like right. Uh, um, running a marathon. I I am a firm believer that anyone could run a marathon if they really wanted to. Uh, and it's not because there's a there is a a lack of strategies that are available to people in order to run a marathon. You could look up because my first marathon I trained for 30 days and then ran the marathon. And I googled running a marathon in 30 days training plan. And I found a training plan for 30 days. This is what you do for 30 days and you'll run a marathon on the 30th day. I was like, okay, there's my strategy. Um, but the strategy is the least important because you can know what to do and still not do it. And that's because of the story that you tell yourself. And that's the second S. The story is the thing that I always say that we're the best salespeople in the world when it comes to selling ourselves on why we should or shouldn't do something. And everyone has a story about why they are where they are. Oh, I, you know, this video didn't do well because the algorithm didn't say so, or God didn't say so, or or your mother didn't say so. And that's why the story, right? Right. And there's there's always something. And that's why for me, I know the algorithm exists. I know it's an actual thing. I'm not in denial of that. But any story that I tell myself of why a piece of content didn't do well, I try and make myself the one to blame because therefore I'm the one in charge and able to make a difference. Where like if you blame the algorithm, then you're totally out of it's it's out of your control. But the stories that that we have, they protect us from pain and it gives a reason why it's not our it's not our fault. Right. Oh, it's not my fault that this video didn't do well with the algorithm and da da da. Um, but the stories that protect also imprison. And they keep you, they keep you where you are. Um, so that was the when I came home 
from from being on the boat, it was a change of story. Instead of saying my story is what's the point? Wouldn't it just be easier? My story was I can find a way. I can do this. And my t- my story had totally changed. Mm-hmm. Now that's the one where it's like you either believe it or you don't. The strategies, people can implement strategies all day long and they work or don't work. I believe with a strategy, it works or doesn't based on the story that you tell yourself about that strategy. Because some people just say, well, I'm big boned. You know, oh, I'm I'm big boned. So, you know, even though I work out, oh, I'm big boned and, right. you know, God wants me, me to be fat or whatever. Um so, so the, the most important thing is your state, the, the, the state that you're in, the physical state that you're in, uh, high energy, low energy, it all comes down to that because whatever physical state you're in, that will determine the story that you tell yourself because before it was like, uh, what's, what's the point? I'm never going to find a girlfriend. I'm never going to get out of debt. Da, 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 da. Woe is me. And it was like, a, once I got up on the board, that little win, that little win changed everything. And then it was like, all right, let's go. Let's rock and roll. And it was a change in, in state. I said, Last time that I was on, um, I don't want to be motivated to make content. I want to be inspired to make content. And the inspired, like being inspired, that changes my state. Where I'm like, I have to make this video right now. Nothing else is important to me. Versus like, all right, like I'm going to go, I got to get motivated to make my video and da 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 da. (laughs) Um, and and it's the same thing with live streams. You know, I, I went for like a week and a half just canceling all of my live streams. And it was very unapologetically canceling my live streams. It wasn't, I'm so sorry, I can't do this. Da, 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 da. It was just like, hey, no live stream tonight. Not doing it. Don't feel like it. Peace. And like that was it. Yeah. Cause I wasn't in the physical state um to do anything. And and that that goes into like being entertaining or being on when when you are in the right state you don't feel the need to be those things because you just so naturally are mm-hmm. so those are the the three things and that's why it's so important for me where it's like if i don't feel like making a video i'm not going to make a video if I don't feel like doing a live stream, I'm not going to do a live stream because to do so in a different state would create a story about making a video that is unproductive. For example, making YouTube videos isn't fun. Right. And then regardless of the strategy that I have, okay, we're going to upload twice a week or whatever. Every time I go to make a video, then my story is, this isn't fun. Why the heck am I doing it? And then you're burnt out. Yep. And like, that's the roller coaster that you go on. So you change your state and you can change your life. And like, I feel like I can say that because like, I just, I just did it. Like that's, that's what I've been working on. I haven't been working on videos. I haven't been working on live streams. I've been working on me and like what I'm going to do and what I'm going to, to like give to the world. Um, But if you ask, if you ask someone like, why have they failed? In the past, hey, well, the first question is, have you ever failed at something? And typically everyone says yes. And if they say no, then they lie about other things too. And uh, then the, the, the next question is, when you failed, why did you fail? 
And everyone will give you a list of things. I didn't have the right money or I didn't have uh, the right people. The people said we didn't have the right leader. I didn't have the time. I didn't have this. I didn't have that. And they'll give you a list of resources. But the, the, the thing to focus on is not your resources. It's your resourcefulness. Someone, someone asked me today what, uh, what, um, editing software I use. That's a resource, right? And if you're wondering, I use Final Cut Pro. It's $350. It's a resource, but my videos are good or not good, not because of the the resource that I use, not because of the editing that I use. It's because of the input that I put into the video. Um, and so really the most important thing is not the resources, it's your resourcefulness. And I think that human emotion is the number one resource. And that goes back to like what we were talking about, like just being in tune with your emotions and listening to yourself and what you're feeling and why you're feeling it. Um, in my opinion, if you're, if you're creating content from that state of like, I really want to make this because like, this is important to me or this is what energizes me and it's one video a month, then that's better than grinding and posting a video every single, every single day. Yeah. Because you're doing it from the right energetic state. You could say that, that arguably that the person that posts every single day will see much more growth, but then it goes to what we were saying earlier of like, be careful what you wish for. Cause if you're creating content from the wrong place in, in the first place and you feel like you gotta entertain and you feel like you gotta captivate and that's when it really all yeah. boils over. Also how sustainable is that? Exactly. It's not, it's not, it's not. And I think that every creator learns that and they're like, Oh, okay. I got to do something different. Um, but if we can help and warn you about that, then you can, then you can, you can uh, recognize it when it rears its ugly head versus not being in the know and and not understanding what's uh, what's happening. Yes. Yeah. So that's my two cents. Rant over. <laughs> Class dismissed. but those are my those are my three s's is strategy story state i have a lot of strategies and i love strategies because a strategy is something that can take you from point a to point b um but a strategy won't really work unless you have the right story about that strategy and what gets you to believe that story is the state that you're in so state's most important then focus on what's the story you're telling yourself and then look for strategies to implement to, in this case with content, make the best content that you can and grow your following. Thank you for sharing all of that. Yeah. That's a, that's a lot. It was a lot. It was a lot, but thank (laughs) you. I appreciate you being a little vulnerable there to, yeah discuss where you've been with that and how you've arrived where you're at now and you know i'm 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 glad that you've found some direction as well as are in a better place cuz i understand mm. what that's like so yeah yeah thank thank you for sharing that and hope hopefully that helps other people who are watching listening or even catching this later so thank you rob that that's awesome i appreciate it and i i think it's important to you know talk about that stuff and we're we're halfway through october november is uh men's mental health month and uh it's it's easy to like get up in the story that you're alone or that you're the only person in the entire history of the world that has ever, you know, felt these emotions and emotions and faced what you're facing. What I've learned 
through many hours of personal growth and meditation and taking time for myself is the the emotions that feel most personal are actually most universal. And they're the ones that actually like most people in the world have felt, but the only thing is they're just as good as you are at hiding it and not talking about it. Um, but it is, it is important to, to talk about. Um, and that's, that's life. We, we hadn't, there was an eclipse in, uh, in, uh, Austin this past weekend. Were you able to see the the uh, the solar eclipse? We tried. It oh, was yeah, yeah okay. it was too cloudy to see it where we were. Okay. Okay. Um but uh you know looking up at at the sun and and moon and everything and you you just you look up there and you're like we're just on this this rock that's floating in space. And like you've heard it before but it's like what a wild thing to like you know, uh, there, there's this uh, <laughs> there's this goalie. He played for um, the, the Philadelphia Flyers. His name's uh, Igili, uh, Iggy Briz- Brizgalov, mm. something like that. Uh, he's a whack wacko. <laughs> but then again, you got to you got to be kind of crazy to play goalie in in most sports. You got to yeah. be a little little odd up here. <laughs> but he was doing this interview, and he was like. He was like, the the universe is so humongous big. He's like this Russian guy. <laughs> the universe is so humongous big. And then you think about like the problems that we have down here. Yeah. Down on Earth. And it's like nothing. <laughs> <laughs> and that's like looking up at the eclipse, I was like, wow, we're 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 just we're just on this floating rock. It's true. You know, and uh, my mentor says that everyone has a, an emotional state that they go back to. And, and for me, it's embarrassment. Hmm. And I think that where those scary thoughts came from was dealing with the embarrassment of financial struggles or not being in a relationship. Um, those are, those are two of the most common, common things to be frustrated and worried about in life. Yeah. And yet here I am in my apartment feeling all sorry for myself. And it's like, erase that. Get that out of here. Let's look for solutions now. It's time. And that's another, I mean, you, you talked about with, with content, you know, just working through self-worth. Oh yeah. And for, for me, it's, it's the embarrassment of like, what if I post something and it's embarrassing and people, people think I'm weird or whatever. Newsflash, Robert, you are weird. Get over it, you know? <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, I mean, it's so interesting. You never think about having to work through emotions when you're making content or posting content or creating a video, but it's a very real thing. And I know for a fact that, because you you admitted it to me that you've worked through it and I've worked through it, which means, heck, other people have worked through it too. Yeah. Uh, Yeah, but that's that's the beauty that that life is and has to offer is working through those those pro- problems and and my therapist says uh, depression is a lack of hope for the future and happiness is equal to progress when you're making progress and you're seeing progress that's what makes you happy. So and that's why social media is such a slippery slope because then you see progress with followers, you see progress with likes, you see progress with views, and then you associate that with happiness. So you have to be weary of that. Yeah. What are the what are the things that are actually important to you that you can actually get love and energy from? And what are the vanity metrics that you're looking at that you should do nothing more than look at them and and almost just kind of like wave at them as they float on by. Yeah, like your your emails that you get with your uh your your grade your My your stream rating. rating. Yeah, uh, you know what would be funny is I don't know. I'm sure it was like a do not respond you know email. But what would be funny is if you turned it back on and said, actually, I think 
that my stream was a 10 out of 10. This was a 10 and that's out of 10. My story. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. I'll turn it on just to see. I'll turn it back on just to see if I can be like, excuse me. That was a 10 out of 10. No, no, no. Excuse you. (laughs) That was a 10 out of 10. And if you were actually there and weren't just looking at the statistics, you'd know. You would know it was a 10 out of 10. (laughs) Uh, Yeah. That's so awesome. I love that. (laughs) I love it. Oh, man. Those emails are dangerous. It's true. You made it's you true. made such you, a mean, great point, dude. You ha- you made such a great point about this, like those vanity metrics and understanding that those those really like when you should think about what that your relationship with those metrics are. I think, and, mm-hmm. and no one can answer yeah. that except for you, as as the person yeah. and the creator who has to look at those for whatever reason. I know it's different person to person. Some of us are hobbyists some of us are full-time creators but regardless of that you gotta you gotta understand what that relationship is and i've said this before and this has come up in other conversations any of that all of those numbers are not indicative of your worth as a person yeah yep yeah those were the exact words i was thinking yeah so and maybe not indicative that that's a that's a big word for me (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> that's a big word for Elmo. <laughs> um, but uh but yeah totally i completely agree with that yeah i was gonna i was gonna add something to it and then i went on the indicative i i, I went for the joke versus the serious <laughs> dang it robert <laughs> dang it <laughs> next time next uh, time man i'm trying to remember what i was going to say Oh, what I was going to say was, you know, uh, I think this was a TikTok audio, but it was something like a hundred views isn't a lot or like a hundred followers is not a lot of people, but if a hundred people showed up to my front door right now and wanted to come inside, I would be totally overwhelmed. Right. And it's the same thing with, with looking at, uh, you know, my following, um, I've been at like 17, nine, 17.9 K for the last maybe couple weeks. And, uh, I usually wouldn't be so specific with the number, but I was like, man, when am I going to hit 18 K? I feel like I'm, <laughs> I'm losing pause. What's happening? Yeah. Um, and you know, I, I, I look at that number and, and, with my friend, some of my friends, um, looking at their numbers, it's like, yeah, no, I'm I'm a small creator, small creator. But then it's like you take seventeen thousand, eighteen thousand people, it's and you fill people, you, you you put them in, uh, you know, uh, NHL arena, like fills up a good amount of that arena. There, it's a lot of people. Um, yeah, it's all about perspective, right? It keeping really everything, is. keeping everything in perspective. Yeah. Um, and I think that I said last time, you know, create for the people that that are following you. Um, it's kind of the, uh, excuse me, the field of dreams, you know, build it and they shall come. Mm-hmm. Like, like, make content for the people that uh, that are following you, not for the potential people that could follow you in the future um and when you do that i think that it uh your your community feels better better served i guess and then yeah just having fun with it i've started doing modeling pictures and uh like yeah. uh you know like like modeling with the uh with the the lego you know and i'll i'll recreate the Lego official model picture and I'll, I'll do it. And that's just something that I thought would be funny. And, uh, everyone else is like, dude, these are hilarious. Yeah. My friend diamond figs was like, I, I need the full calendar. Where, where is that? When's that coming out? I love and so that. that kind of sparked an idea. Like, Oh, maybe I should do, like you should a make cal- a calendar. Kind of man. You should. It's I love, funny. I love those lifestyle photos. And 
Yeah. I've <laughs> I've heard <laughs> great. <laughs> so there's one of the Venator out there and uh I, it's only it, with the turtle neck. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Neck, right? I yeah, yeah. I photoshopped Fred's face on one of those and sent it to him. Oh when yeah. Those came <laughs> yeah, you sent it to me too. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's, it's incredible. It's as, so good. I was going to say, yeah, I just I love I love the whole thing. I love that. It's so good. It's so funny. Also, here's here's another thing, another piece of content along like along the lines of because that's a newer thing that i've been doing right yeah. the 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 uh the thing that comes to mind anytime you post any sort of new content is expect that it will not do well yeah and the reason why is just because your community is not used to you doing that sort of thing i oh I don't know where my phone is. Oh, pff. it's under my planner. <laughs> That's where it is. I, out of curiosity, looked at... So if you look at my Instagram page now, I do like this this post where I will show a set and then I show like the minifigure that came... One of the minifigures that comes in the set and how much it costs now on the resale value or resale market. Yeah. My first picture that I ever posted of that, I was like, oh, this is so sick. Like, this is going to be awesome. Da, da, da. And I was, it was November 16th, 2022. It got 31 likes. Really, it was 30 because one of them was my other accounts, the ELPN account that I went on to and liked the picture from there. Um, so it was really 30 likes. And uh, I posted one last week, October 9th, and it has 1,400 likes. And I had an interesting conversation with Nikki Bricks, who I mentioned earlier, um, where she talked to, she, she mentioned, um, she said, I ran an experiment, I'm sure she won't mind me reading this. I ran an experiment and determined that despite the fact that my past weekend uploads for Lego drops performed well on YouTube, other videos do not. And she was talking about, she did like a, uh, uh what was it lightsaber table video mm. um and i said is that is that because uh it's not interesting or is it because your audience just isn't is just mostly used to lego stuff mm -hmm. and she was like that's actually a fair point and so that's my thing is anytime you start making any sort of new content on your page which i i highly recommend that you do um understand that your audience isn't used to it oh yeah and so that it, it won't it won't perform well because it's not something that they follow you for but once they understand okay this is another thing that i'll get when i follow rob the builder then they're almost looking forward to the modeling i don't know if people look forward to those modeling pictures but uh, you know, maybe maybe some other stuff. Maybe some of the funny, the funny, the funny reels, uh, modeling pictures. No, no, no. No one's following me for this. No one's following me for this, and Whatever. I'm fine with that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm I'm following me for those. I like to look at them when I feel I'm feeling. That's bad. for you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you do that for yourself. Yeah, this is for me, and everyone else can look and enjoy. <laughs> but. Uh, well, you're you're absolutely correct in that anytime you try a new type of content, there's always going to be that likely dip that dip. in in, yeah. in whatever engagement views, whatever it might be, depending on the platform. But when whenever you stray away from your usual thing, you can't expect it to perform as well or better than what you're already doing. You just it's you can't and and actually on twitch that is very very true because yeah of, sure like with video games game video i mean games. like whatever it is on twitch as, right? a, like as it, a lego creator yeah especially as a lego creator i know that if i were especially when i was right in the middle of my lego content run because the first year of me mm -hmm. doing lego on here it was almost all lego that yeah if i decided on an off time just to stream a game or something no one would show up that's just how it goes yeah so yeah yeah that's really interesting mm -hmm. and and it's i mean admittedly like i i jumped on and today and saw uh zach and 
someone else and they're both playing um video games and i was like oh okay i'm gonna watch someone else you know because yeah because like that's for me that's just not the type of stream that i want to watch and yeah. that's just like a personal preference it's nothing against zach or the other i forget who the other creator was yeah. um actually it's all against zach i don't like that guy <laughs> he's <laughs> he's gonna he, I shouldn't have said that. He's going to make some sort of redeem out of that, or someone will. <laughs> Already done. Um, <laughs> but, <laughs> but uh, yeah, I mean, and it, different content will attract different people as a, as a result. That darn Zach. <laughs> darn guy. It happens, and it certainly... It, it affects your viewership on twitch definitely like if you stray out of what you're known for yeah well and and that was the thing like now i'm at the point where everyone has seen my running content that i kind of merge with lego stuff it's usually lego drops you're like like uh lego releases lego news um and that that idea was totally taken from swole bricks like right. totally admittedly um, his idea first. And I saw it and I was like, I love that because I hung out with him a lot at brick world Chicago and every, not every person, but like probably at least a few times, a handful of times every day, someone would come up to him and be like, Oh yeah, man, like I really got to get into the gym more. Da, da, da. And then they would talk about that along with the Lego stuff. And I was like, that's really interesting because it it merges two things that he loves and gives people something else to talk about. Um, I've definitely not said hello to creators before because I was nervous. Um, and other people have said to me like, oh yeah, I didn't want to come up and say hi because I was nervous. I was like, what the heck? Just come say hi. It's yeah. no big deal. Just a just a weird person that likes to run and build Lego. Yeah. Um, but and so I was like, I, I I would love to like merge my content and do some running stuff, kind of like what you do with lifting. And he was like, You should totally do that. Um and so I kind of made that decision in Chicago and I knew I was like, okay, I'm gonna do this, and it's not gonna get views. It's just it's just not. And I was fine with that. And it's gotten to the point where, you know, there's enough hype around releases that it will get pretty good views. But if I were to make like a solely just running video, it would get mm-hmm. maybe 150 views. And it's kind of like knowing that going into it, it, I mean, goes back to what we said earlier about expectations versus appreciation. When you start making any sort of new content, instead of having expectations about what it should be, just have appreciation that anyone, <laughs> literally anyone, watched it and liked it and enjoyed it. And, and you will be far better off. And also, it's in the pursuit of finding another type of content that you yourself enjoy making, right? Yeah. Right? Yep. So Totally. If it comes down to, I mean, AZ Pinoy calls it out in the chat, you know, if it makes you happy... You know, like understand that maybe your mm-hmm. metrics will take a hit, but maybe it's a it's potential for something that you enjoy more in the long run. Yeah, and 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 could be a, a core part of your content. It's so fun for me to talk about running and for people to message me and be like, "Oh man, I would love to run with you sometime" or whatever. Like that that makes my day more so than. I agree with your opinion about the Venator or your opinion about the Razor Crest, which yeah. is not correct anyways, you know? Yeah. <laughs> um, but like, yeah, I would love to go on a run with you. Or, you know, I started running and it sucks. It's like, yep, <laughs> I know, <laughs> I know. And that's one thing that I forgot to mention was everyone loves a... Uh, I guess you could call it like a comeback story, a story where 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 you uh, follow through despite of the things that you face and because of the things that you you face. Right. Um, that's why, like, 
if you hear me talk about marathons, I I don't really talk about running marathons all that much because if I were to actually talk about stuff, it would be stuff that happened to me. And despite all that, I still finished the race. Like, right. you know, I had to rip out my toenail or something like that. That's never happened. But like, that's an example. Um, <laughs> I did think w- during one race that I had lost a toenail. Wow. That's a story for another time. Um, <laughs> but if I were to tell you, like, you, you, you hear that and you're like, no, I'm nope. fine. I nope. don't need to run the marathon. No, thank and, you. And people love to export their stories of, I finished this race despite going through X, Y, and Z. Right. Um, that's why I, I try not to talk too much about the race, but then it's like, oh yeah, it was fun. They're like, ah, pff, he's lying or something like that. Um, but I, I love to run and I would love for more people to run as well. Um, and so I, I, it's not that I make it sound easy, but I don't want to make it sound so hard that everyone just writes it off and they're like, I could never do that. Right. You want it to feel accessible. Yeah. And that's, I mean, that's a story that people tell themselves is like, Oh, I, I have bad knees, so I don't run. It's like, no, 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 right. You don't run. And therefore you don't have, therefore you have bad knees because you don't work out. You don't work on the strength. Um, my my friend he ran uh, a half marathon this past uh, yesterday. Yes, wow, that feels like so long ago. <laughs> yesterday, and uh, I called him afterwards, and I was like, "How was it? How you feel? Da da da, all the stuff." Um, and we started talking about marathons. He said, "Hey, hey, half marathon, marathon," and he said to me, "You know, I just don't want to have to commit that amount of time into training for a marathon." And I was like, "I." fucking love that you said that because most people would just write it off and say, I could never do that. I could never do that. But for him, it was like, I know I could, but I just don't want to invest the time. It's about the and choice I respect that, you make. that so much more, right. so much more. Whether you can or can't, you're always right. So it just you know, depends on what you say. I completely agree with that stance in general when it comes to making the time for those particular things. I re- I remember mm-hmm. having conversations like this with friends. This was when I was getting into Twitch for the first time too, and I was starting to do content regularly. And I had friends yeah. who were like, "Oh, I want it'd be really cool to to be a streamer, but I just can't do that, right?" And it was is the yeah. same conversation. I just don't have the personality. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And it was it was very much like, "Oh, I just can't." And it was like, "Well, yeah, is it that you can't, when? When did you or try? or is it?" that you haven't made the time to see one, if it's something you would indeed want to continue to do and two, commit to learning it and, and trying it for a while, because that's the difference, right? Is a lot of people say that about a lot of hobbies and Mm -hmm. often it becomes a matter of maybe you're just not willing to spend the time in the hobby. Mm -hmm. Right. If, if it's running a marathon, it's, training for it and getting in shape for it or Mm -hmm. something like making content, which is a lot of dedication and learning technology and learning how to be an entertainer to some degree. So Mm -hmm. it's, it's really a matter of, is it, you can't do it or is that a shortcut for, I just don't want to take the time to learn it or be in it Mm -hmm. because often that's what it is. Often that's what it boils down to. So, Mm -hmm. and I found myself, I used to say that stuff all the time when it came to certain things. And I, when I had that conversation about content creation with a friend, I started remembering if something like that would come up, like, yeah, I should be a runner. It's part, part of my response now is, yeah, I just don't think I, I would be willing to put in the time to be a marathon runner. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Versus, versus, oh, I have bad knees. Right. I have, I have this. I have right. It. And it's like, that, that's the story, right? And the story protects you, but it imprisons you. It keeps you where you are. And it, and it gives you a reason of why you are where you are. Right. That is typically something that's outside of, outside of your control. Um, but 
yeah, to say, you know, like, like I, I wanted my, my, my parents to run with me or, you know, kind of get into running more. And, uh, they're just like, my mom was just like, I just don't want to invest the time. Want to, you know? Yeah. I just don't want to. And you know Spend what? The time I respect it. that way more, way more than I could never do that. I can't do that. I could never do that. Right. I could never do that. Understandable. Um, yeah. And it's all relative, right? Because after running marathons now, a half marathon, that's like, oh man, half marathon. Oh. 13 let's go let's go for it <laughs> let's go have a ball you know and but then it's like 100 ooh, 100 miles oh that <laughs> that's a lot of mileage where my friend who just finished the half he had the same reaction about a marathon he was like 26 Oof, that's that is a ton right um it's all relative and and that was something that i w- with youtube i had to say to myself because like TD Bricks, who's got you know three million subscribers on YouTube, or maybe it's two million, I forget. Hmm. His views are super captivating, but they're really well edited and they're they're really short cuts. Mm-hmm. Um, and I remember watching his videos and being like, I could totally do this, but I don't want to invest the time to have to do this every video. Yeah, I made a three minute video in that similar style it took me all day yeah. to edit I was it like, takes time this is so tiring right. i'm not doing that press record throw in some funny clips that's me <laughs> that's what i'm about so yeah be aware of your words your, be your words hypnotize <laughs> be aware yeah how are you how are you feeling man how are you feeling after some of this discussion I feel great. I I have been wanting to talk about this uh, for a while, and uh, I think it's an important conversation to have. To know that other people are not alone, and and if you watch most of my content, you I mean it's kind of like the it's kind of like the Robin Williams thing, right? It's like you, you make everyone else around you happy, but the main person that you don't focus on is yourself. Um, and at no point throughout my last, you know, five, six months in particular of making content, did I think that I was, you know, putting on a mask or putting on a, a, a show or whatever um, for people. I, I really did genuinely enjoy it. The problem was after I had posted the video, then I was getting caught up in, in watching the the views and likes rack up. Yeah, I mean right now I'm I'm focused on progress cuz like I said progress that's that's what what happiness is rooted in. You you make any sort of progress, you that gives you energy and excitement in your life. Um you know, you step on the scale and you lost 2 pounds, you're like, "Let's freaking go. Let's go back <laughs> to the gym." Yeah. Two times today. Let's do it. Let's go for I've never gone on a run in my entire life. Let's go do that. Let's try that. Let's go have a salad. Let's do this. Let's do that, you know? <laughs> yeah. Progress gives you the momentum and progress also gives you the happiness through like throughout the process. A lot of people always say like, "I'll be happy when" I'll be happy when I have ten thousand followers. I'll be happy when I have uh ten ten thousand dollars in the bank. I'll be happy when I have this job. I'll be happy when I'm dating this person. But it's like, why not be happy throughout the process? And that happens when when you are aware that you're making progress uh, at each stage of getting to your ultimate goal, whatever that is. Right. It's so important. To, uh, I, it's so important to be also happy with the process right it's it's especially like in context of content creation yeah i think a lot of people see there's a youtuber who's really popular they get all these views all these people you know are subscribed to them and they're doing awesome and they're super happy but they don't see all the work that goes into making a video they don't see everything that goes into what it means to record the video, get B-roll, write a script if you need yeah. one, 
edit the video, yeah. post it, promote it, et cetera, right? Or even even streaming, doing all the work on OBS, putting the scenes together, coming up with mm-hmm. ideas for oh streams, yeah. and, and being on for however many hours you're live. Mm-hmm. I've seen so many creators who step into YouTubing or or Twitch streaming or Instagram posting, Ing. blogging, yeah. Yeah, Instagramming, <laughs> and yeah. it becomes this thing where they're like, "Oh wow!" Like they were there for like all the things that you you reap from from success, but they don't necessarily realize. The work, it's still work. It's still things that Mm -hmm. take time and energy Mm -hmm. and brain power and work. Like it's regardless Mm -hmm. of the fact that maybe you, and also the the potential to blow up, right? Like that doesn't always happen. You can work your ass off and Mm -hmm. not be very big. And, you know, views, et cetera, it's not everything. But it is still a metric and is still a thing that a lot of people chase when they get into this Mm -hmm. often. For sure. So, yeah. And it's, I mean, it's easy to get caught up and and lost in the sauce in it. Yeah. Well, the, the, the hustle and bustle that is, that is content creation. It's such a, I mean, such a fine line going back and forth between, you know, like, Focusing on what is actually important to you, and then those those vanity metrics. Um, yeah, yeah. I think that like when I'm an important question is like if I find myself looking at my views again, it's like why is this important for me that it has this number of views, right? Um, and uh, yeah, I think I mean so much of content like you said is is the process. Yeah, and you don't you don't see the process. You just see the final product. Mm-hmm. Um for most of the creators that are, you know, really 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 big, if you if you saw the work that they did, I don't think that you would be very surprised. At right. the success that they've seen like emily is the perfect example mm-hmm. because like you see her videos and that's that's all you see but then you don't see like the work that goes into it the thought that goes into it she has uh and i highly recommend you go and watch it if you go to her vlog of um brick slopes her brick slopes vlog in the description there is a link to her keynote address that she gave to all the AFOLs at that uh, convention. It's not posted to her regular page. It's like one of those videos where it's like, you can only watch it if you have the link. So if you click the link, you'll be able to watch it. Um, But she is so intentional about the content and even the words that she says, the things that she says. Um, Like those, those, uh, do I have this in my Lego city? Those are so well thought out that once you understand what she's actually trying to do, you can't unsee it and you're like, this is genius. This is yeah. incredible. I loved her talk. I was So did I. Yeah, we were both so there. did I. We were, we were sitting oh. you were sitting right behind me yeah. at, at that talk. And I loved that talk. And we're talking about Emma Soros on YouTube. Uh, Emma Soros, and everywhere. Yes. Sorry, and everywhere. Yeah. yeah, Emily. You're right. It's a perfect example of if you're someone who wants to actually make something of content and this isn't just a hobby for you, but like you want to like legit build towards success. Yeah. Yeah. It is so much work to Mm -hmm. just come out with video and and you said it intent. There's so much intent and strategy behind the work that she does. She doesn't, Mm -hmm. I knew this just from watching her content, but hearing her talk about it, she doesn't just throw videos out there. It is Mm -mm. thought out. 
it is Mm -hmm. definitely part of the work that she puts into the video is exactly how she like what is the video she wants to put out what is the point of the video what is her using you know your your three s's strategy right what's the strategy what's the story what's the state she Mm -hmm. does those things and she's very intentional when it comes to a lot of those videos that she puts out and like you said once you kind of understand what she's doing you can't unsee it and yeah yeah same same deal like it's it's the strategy right once you once you understand the strategy then it's very obvious yeah each of her videos yeah yeah and so yeah be being a creator whether it be a youtuber a streamer like if you're if you're even trying to build something with it legitimately there's a lot of work and yeah like you said people don't see that they see the end product generally and they're like oh wouldn't that be cool mm-hmm. to just be a famous youtuber <laughs> or a a well-known mm-hmm. streamer and it, it doesn't always work like that it's really the work the work is important and it takes a lot of thought and energy there i was work when i uh was working in sales there was a manager that gave a uh, a message and he was he was talking at a conference and he said if you came out to my office and observed us for a weekend you know running training and running sales meetings and all that stuff i don't really think that you would be surprised but or uh, i don't think that you would be impressed excuse me i don't think that you would be impressed but if you stayed with me for an entire year, you would not be surprised at the success that we would see. And he was like, that by no means is an open invitation to stay with me for a year. <laughs> but <laughs> it's the same thing with, with Emily. You know, seeing firsthand when we went to the Lego store, her making videos, there's nothing that was that was um surprising. Yeah, yeah, surprising about what she did. Um, but then when you see the final product, it's like, oh my gosh, this is impressive. I remember watching her short form video of going to the Lego store and I was so impressed. I was like, what? when did this happen? This is so good. Like, what the <laughs> heck? I was like, it was it was one of those moments where I was pissed off because – it was so good. <laughs> and I, I had the same I had the same resources. Yeah. But I was not as resourceful as she was. She was much more resourceful than I was <laughs> with my time. Um and yeah. so I watched that video. I was, I was just pissed off. I was like, this is so good. Like she's making me she's making me look bad, man. She's making me look bad. <laughs> and she's nice. You s- and Ross is nice. Yeah. And it's just like Shut up. (laughs) (laughs) Shut your mouths. Shut up. (laughs) They are nice, man. Man, they're so great. Yeah. They're so great. Yeah. Uh, You you just want something to be wrong with them. You know? (laughs) Like, they're talented. They're smart. They're tall. Like, come on. (laughs) We... We went around San Antonio with uh, after we went to the Lego store, and Ross was telling us all these facts. He's telling us all this history about Texas, and I was like, what "The heck, you guys are awesome. They're great people. <laughs> if you ever have the chance to meet them, and you're at a convention or something, don't yeah. be nervous to go up to them and say hi. Yeah, because they're the most down to earth people that you will meet. They're awesome. Yeah, Emma Soros, Mr. Soros, just fantastic people. Emily and Ross, uh, the, just yeah. getting to s- meet them and actually spend legitimate time with them just chatting and and hanging out and having dinner and eating pizza eating pizza pizza. like just just getting to know them as people was such a highlight because it was it was just nice to see them outside of that like youtuber bubble right like outside of that yeah yeah yeah, sure creator 
you just seeing like just getting 3D. to the you can yeah, like getting to know them, around them getting to know well, them as people Ross, yeah, yeah. ross is, <laughs> like i'm a short guy in ross both ross and emily are are super tall, tall. so i it was more yeah. like that with yeah. the hug but no it was just it, they're good people and i can't wait to see them at another con i'm sure at brick slopes next year so uh yeah yeah they're good people and she, but yeah they they're also the perfect example of like the amount of work that goes into being a good creator in in mm-hmm. doing something really solid so and i think that you know when when talking to them i i can talk to them and have a conversation with them where is like if i wasn't a creator or if i was getting in my own way of starting posting videos and i asked them a question they would just be talking at me i wouldn't have the understanding of actually making a youtube video or making a short form video um to understand their level of knowledge yeah. about it because and it's and it's an interesting thing because like when I when Justin was trying to tell me what to do on the board it had become so second nature for him it was almost hard to explain it and we found that I was actually better at explaining it to the other people on the boat because I had just just done it for the first time and kind right. of put it into words better where it's the same thing with Ross and Emily. It's just kind of second nature. They just, they just make content. Right. They don't really like they, they're intentional about it, but then once they're in the zone, they're just, they just make it. Yeah. There's, um, a, there's something to be said about when you operate at such a high level at something, it's really easy to, it's just, forget it it. yeah it's really easy to forget like the fact that you picked up all this knowledge along the way and when you talk to someone who's not operating at that level you might miss something right you might Mm -hmm. An, an example with twitch right would be um playing copy copyright music you know like i kind of struggled with that a little bit and if if i were to say to you hey a more I've never done a live stream before. I know content or uh, copy copyright music is a is a thing that I have to worry about. What do I need to do? And you would walk me through OBS without me even looking at it. I would be so. Con- I would just be like, yeah, never mind. I'll I'll look up a YouTube video yeah. or something. Yeah, you know. So you gotta. You just gotta. I mean, that's it. also why I offered to do it in a call with you, but you never took me up on that. Just saying. Yeah, I did. <laughs> We actually, talked about it. That's, actually, that's, actually, that's why I was able to do it. Share screen later. I mean, it took a couple tries to get you there. This is Remember? True. It did. Yeah. It did. I was like, oh, yeah. didn't work. Didn't mm, work. Mm, you were mm, a bad missed, teacher. No, you missed something. I blamed you. I blamed <laughs> you versus blaming myself. Yeah. If I was really in tune with my emotions, I would say, what's wrong with me? I don't want to talk with you. <laughs> uh, oh, man. That's good. That is good. So this week, hey man, you got uh, your second ever live crossing the streams. I know. Here's my I here's know. my question for you: yeah. Is how happy are you that you were able to do it at Brick Slopes and kind of get that first live one out of the way, not at TwitchCon? Yeah, it was great. It was, and and I have you to thank for that opportunity. So thank you for for yeah. putting me in touch with the right people yeah, to that to make that great. happen. Uh, it's been shout out to to Brian and Cody and all of them at at Brooks. Yeah. Oops. Uh, Oops. No, it was great. It was really good to get that. And and you know this this one isn't really crossing the streams. It kind of, like it it'll, it's going to probably feel a little bit like it, but it's it's yeah. tech, it's technically a showcase of the Lego Twitch community on a TwitchCon Gotta stage. Got to get our own category. Yeah, Lego category. Yeah, that's something um, that we're gonna I'm gonna bring up during that, and um, yeah, I'll be I'll be pushing it. I I, I feel like it's going to be more than anything, just a proud moment for the community because they've been out there thriving 
for years and years and years back in the days. Yeah. I, was I mean, was set to build and brick and nick and all the people who were first doing Lego on Twitch. And to come this Rob far. Rob the Builder guy. He's been Rob here the Builder. since, since uh, just, Justin.tv. Justin. You know? dot, those Man. days. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's going to be a proud moment, though, for the community because they're going to see people representing the group. Yeah. Folks like Zach M. Routledge, Dr. Cat Builds, Brick and Nick, Panfred Nudo, and, and me up there just talking about a section of All Twitch. <laughs> Mostly. I mean, I'm just there to put those. No, 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 no. But. <laughs> I love that we'll get to do it. Uh, we also have like a and uh, like a Twitch ambassador, and I don't know if you're familiar with that program. So like you know you have your no. affiliates, which are most of us who stream regularly. When you hit that level, you can become an affiliate, and then you can become a partner, and then you can become uh, what's called a Twitch ambassador. And they're kind of like a level of people that Twitch recognizes. They're like, hey, these are like people who embody Twitch or at least like what it means to be a creator on Twitch. And we have a person nice. who used to go by Tiny and Trash, and now they just go by Trash. Trash is their name. I love it. They're they're a Twitch ambassador, and they're going to be there helping us with this. They're like the admin, they're like the admin host of the whole thing. But what's great is we nice. have this person who is like up there that Twitch is like, hey, this is one of your ambassadors. They're going to be there to talk with us about the Twitch community and act as another person who can champion this section mm. of the website and the community at large. So I'm really stoked That's that awesome. that it was approved and that we could even hold this panel. So I'm super stoked. And 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 anyone who is familiar with those people and those names that are going to be up on stage with me a lot of it, like, you, like you wouldn't be surprised about the stuff we're going to talk about. But the real point and intent of this is to show all those people outside the community that there's some really cool people yeah. doing Lego content on Twitch. And so for yes. those of us who know, who know about it, you're going to see the panel and you're going to like, ah, eh, nothing I don't know already. But the hope... Yeah, they're all rock stars. The hope is that you're going to see people who were at that panel or watched it live on Twitch and who are like, oh, crap, there's a whole bunch of Lego or there's these these crazy yeah. streams. And the hope is that yeah. there's just more awareness and that we'll hopefully get some injection of of newer creators to the com to the community and viewers, because I think we're already thriving, but I would love to just boost that some more. And so that's been that's been my mission within the Lego community Incredible. is to like bring awareness to the Twitch Lego crew, as well as when I'm at TwitchCon, I'll be doing that. And when I'm at things like Brick Slopes, Bricks Cascade, Brick World Chicago in the future, mm -hmm. also bringing awareness to that wonderful, amazing group yeah. of people that are, a lot of you are probably here right now or are watching this this video so i'm excited and i think you know yeah lego is one of those things it's not necessarily something that you would go looking for but if you were to stumble upon it like i've seen a trend an uptick of video like tiktoks and reels of you know a wife and and it's her nerdy husband or the nerdy boyfriend that has the Lego set, and they're not, they're not Lego creators by any means. No, but then it's like this video of the the husband nerding out, you know, he's all yeah. this my at at, and yeah. this is an, uh, an, uh, you know, and so there 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 are a lot of people that love Lego, but wouldn't know to look up stuff like that on Twitch. Yeah, uh, so that's great. I'm so excited to to uh hear about the panel afterwards and then also see my views boost you guys are going to las <laughs> vegas to help me out baby sin city you go you guys go get some get some get some reward for yourselves for helping me and my views <laughs> i can't wait i can't yeah. wait to go man i can't wait to go to to vegas and just see all those friends oh oh the line from uh, the hangover he's like uh how about that drive in <laughs> Guess that's why they call it Sin City. 
<laughs> Dude, I haven't thought about that so line great. in forever, man. I gotta watch that movie. That's I haven't a, seen you it should watch the, that movie this this week. I haven't just seen to that. get yourself in the in the in right long state. Time. It's been a long time. State too. story strategy. State, state story strategy. <laughs> you can add sustain to that. <laughs> sustain. Yeah, you got to sustain it. You can't. You have to find a, a place where you can sustain it. That's true. I'm just putting that little bug in here. You don't have to use anything. You don't have to. use No, I like it because it's it's that it's that consistency. You know, yeah. the strategy works, but the strategy works when you are consistent with it and you sustain this sustain it. Yeah, I love it. Big I love brain, it. big brain energy. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Rob, thank you, dude. This yeah, is, this has been wonderful. Thanks for having me. Thanks for having me. I I, you. I I want the record to show that I did text Amor and say, I got some stuff to talk about, man. <laughs> when can you fit me in? And he was like, how about uh, whatever day it was? And I was like, yeah. I can't. I got a Halloween party. Yeah. Got to go dress up like Ted Lasso. What's another day? <laughs> we figured and it out. And then he texted me this week and said, hey, do you want to do it Yeah, this week before TwitchCon? So yeah, I appreciate I you... You know, um, making making room and time for me in your busy schedule. This has been fun. It's, it's been lots of fun. It was wonderful, man. And I will, you know, I'll always such a good chat. Yeah, thank you. I appreciate that. I appreciate it. I had to, I had to, we, we we needed to talk about something other than scary stories. You know, <laughs> you, you didn't <laughs> want. <laughs> I don't. I don't want any more ghost stories. You don't want any more. Did my door just move? Yeah, it it totally. Spooky. <laughs> oh man. <laughs> All right, let's end. Let's end the stream. Before let's the end the stream. Um, as ghost usual. Ghost stories. <laughs> as usual. The floor is yours. You get to close the show. Have at it, Rob. What's What's the thing that Ron Burgundy says? Stay classy, San Diego.